In this video, we will learn how to track custom dimensions with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. In the previous version of Google Analytics, called Universal Analytics, you could send some additional parameters to enrich your data and customize your reports. That additional data was available in shape of custom dimensions and custom metrics. In Google Analytics 4, you can also configure them. However, there are some differences. For example, scope. So make sure you stick around till the end of this video in order to get the full picture. So let's dive in. First, let's take a quick look at what dimension is in general. Then we'll learn or remember how custom dimensions and dimensions in general work in Universal Analytics, which is the previous version of Google Analytics. And then we will learn how to configure them in Google Analytics 4. So the first question is, what is a dimension in general? If you are new to web tracking, a dimension is basically an attribute that describes an event, a context, a user, or something else, let's say a product. In other words, it is some sort of like a parameter or a property of an item that helps you better understand what kind of item is it or what kind of event or when did it happen and so on. To help you better understand this, here are some examples. For example, if you're tracking clicks of call to action buttons of your website and every button has an ID, you can send that ID to your marketing or analytics tool. Let's say Google Analytics. Then transaction ID is also a dimension. Another example is user's registration country, user's pricing plan, product category, and so on. As you can see, these examples of dimensions apply to different items, different things or events. For example, the first example applies to an event. A second example, which is transaction ID, can also apply to a purchase event. Then the third and the fourth examples apply to a user because they are user dimensions or user attributes, or you can call them whatever you want. And the fifth example applies to a product. So to sum up, a dimension is an attribute or a parameter or a property or called whatever you want of an item, of an event, of a user, of a product or something else. If we talk about Google Analytics, other examples might be page path, page URL, event category, coupon code, and so on. Even if analytics or marketing platform offers a huge list of possible dimensions, they will not cover all the possible use cases that are needed for businesses. For example, in my case, I am selling online courses and their level of difficulty is different. That's why every time someone enrolls in the course, together with that enrollment event, I could send an additional dimension, which is called, let's say, course difficulty level. And the possible values can be beginner, intermediate, or advanced. This dimension is too unique. Therefore, platforms like Google Analytics don't have such a dimension built in. That is why I need to use custom dimensions. If you want to get the maximum out of your marketing or analytics platform, you must customize it. And one of the ways how you can customize it is of course, send some custom parameters. I mean, of course, if your platform supports customization, but in Google Analytics 4 case, that is absolutely possible. Before we jump into the actual configuration of custom dimensions in Google Analytics 4, first, I want to talk about one more thing that users of Universal Analytics will definitely remember, scope. Dimensions in Google Analytics can have different scope. And if you have no idea what it is, here's a very short definition. Scope determines to which particular hits will that custom dimension apply. Now, I'm pretty sure that this sounds confusing, but bear with me and I will show you some examples. In the previous version of Google Analytics, which is called Universal Analytics, there were four scopes of dimensions. First, we had a user scope. So what does it mean is that a dimension with a user scope will apply to all the hits of that user. For example, user ID. So if you wanted to send a user ID or let's say some other user related parameter together with every event, it was enough to send it only once and then all the subsequent events would get that very same dimension attached to that event or page view or whatever. Then another scope is session. That one applies to all the hits of a single session. So for example, if you want to send a session ID, it is enough to send only once per session and then all of the hits in that session will get that custom dimension. A third scope is hit. Now this one applies only to that particular hit with which the dimension was sent. For example, if we send a page view, then page title is a hit scoped event because when a visitor goes to another page, the value of the page title changes. Other examples of hit scoped dimensions can be button ID or event category 
or form ID and so on. And then the last scope in Universal Analytics is product. So if, for example, you are tracking purchases and together with purchases, you're sending the list of products that were purchased, with every product, you can send some additional product scoped custom dimensions, for example, product weight or product color or something else. And if you are already an intermediate or advanced user of Universal Analytics, you already know these four scopes. But now let's take a look at how Google Analytics 4 handles scopes. First of all, user scoped custom dimensions are now known as user properties. Session scope is no longer available. Then hit scope remains as hit scope. So if you are sending a parameter only with some event, that parameter applies only to a particular event. And then there are product scope dimensions. So you can, for example, add some additional parameters together with each product that was, let's say, purchased or viewed. I mean, of course, if you have implemented the e-commerce tracking with Google Analytics 4. However, it looks like these custom dimensions, I'm talking about product scope custom dimensions, are not yet displayed in Google Analytics 4 e-commerce reports. Hopefully that will change in the future. So to sum up, what you should now remember is that if you want to send a custom parameter with an event, remember that the dimension that you are sending will always be a hit scope custom dimension. Of course, you can register them as user properties. I will mention that later in the video as well. But if you want to apply a certain dimension for the entire session, you will need to manually configure your Google Tag Manager or ask your developer to do that to include that particular custom dimension with every hit for that session. There is no way to apply session scope where you just send the value once and all the hits within that session will get that particular, let's say session ID or something else. All right, and now after we got a bit more familiar with the theory about dimensions, let's take a look at one example. Here I have a website and on that website, I have multiple forms. So first of all, I want to track successful form submissions, but also I want to somehow distinguish which exact form was submitted. Well, if you're thinking that it's possible to distinguish the form based on the page URL, on some websites that might work, but in my case, some forms are accessible on different URLs. Therefore, we need to find some other way how to distinguish which exact form was submitted. So first of all, let's take a look what we have in the data layer after we submit this form. Here I am in my Google Tag Manager container. I will enable the preview mode by clicking the preview button. Then I will enter the URL of the website where I will be debugging, click start, and then you will see that your debugger is connected right here and also it is connected right here. Now, if I successfully submit this form, I would expect some information to appear in the data layer and in the preview mode, of course. And that is because this form is built on a plugin which is called Contact Form 7. It is a very popular WordPress form plugin. And also I have configured Contact Form 7 tracking in my Google Tag Manager container. Now, if you want to learn more about it, I will post the link below the video to another guide. So let's submit the form. Here I will enter some gibberish information because this is just for demonstration purposes and click send. The form is successfully submitted. I see the success message right here. And then I go to the preview mode and I see that there is an event called CF7 submission. If I click it and if I go to the data layer, I will see that there are some parameters added right here. So these data points are available in the data layer, but they are not sent anywhere yet. We need to additionally configure Google Tag Manager to send some of this information to Google Analytics 4. For sake of simplicity of this tutorial, what I will do is that I will use this parameter, which is form ID. So every time a form is submitted, I will send the value of that particular form ID parameter. And therefore, this will be my custom dimension. Of course, we could go with other parameters, but this is a bit more complicated. And just to keep this tutorial as short as possible, we will skip this part, at least for now. So first of all, what I need to do is that if I want to access this parameter, I need to create a data layer variable in my Google Tag Manager container. And that variable's name will be exactly form ID. So let's go to variables in Google Tag Manager interface. Then in the user defined variable section, click new, variable configuration, data layer variable and enter form ID. And here I will enter the name, which can be basically anything you want, but this is how I name my variables. Click save. Then I want to use this particular event, this particular data layer event as a triggering condition in my Google Tag Manager container. So what I mean is that if this event appears right here, I want to use this as a triggering condition. Therefore, I need to create a custom event trigger in Google Tag Manager. So go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, new trigger configuration, then custom event and enter CF7 
seven submission just like it is right here or right here and let's name the trigger save it and now the time has come to configure google analytics for tag in this video i presume that you already have at least very basic knowledge of google analytics 4. so this means that you already have at least one configuration tag in your container in this case my google analytics 4 configuration tag contains only one setting which is basically the measurement id of my property and this checkbox is enabled and this tag fires on all pages if you're wondering where to get that measurement id i took it from the admin then selected data stream right here clicked on a particular data stream and then got that id from here so this is a basic requirement that your container should already have of course the measurement id value will be different now let's create an event tag that will send the event about the successful form submission to google analytics 4. so in the tags section click new tag configuration and then click ga4 event here we need to select the configuration tag of the property to which you want to send your data in our case that is ga config tag that i previously showed to you then in the event name field we have to enter well surprise surprise we have to enter the name of the event now what kind of name should it be well first of all i would recommend that you watch another video of mine which is about event tracking in that video i explain how to find the name of the event in google's documentation and if you cannot find it then you can create some custom event name below the video you will find a guide to my event tracking blog post and one of the sections there is about recommended events so google analytics 4 has a list of recommended events and it recommends you to use those particular event names for example if we go to generic list of events you will see some events right here like login refund search select content share and other events then in the sidebar you will also find retail jobs education travel and games and if you take a look at these you will find that none of these lists contain an event that is called i don't know form or form submission or something else related to forms therefore we have to create our own event name so in this example i will enter form submission and now the time has come for the custom dimension if you remember in the data layer we have a parameter called form id and we have already created a variable for it so now we need to add that dimension as a parameter right here you first of all should click the event parameters expand it and then click add row now it's time to add the event of the parameter in this case you can also enter any name you want in my case that can be form id this does not have to be the same as this so you can enter whatever you want and then in the value field we should enter the data layer variable that takes this particular value and inserts it right here so we should click on the variable button and then choose form id data layer variable now the final step is to select our trigger that we have recently created so click on the pencil and then choose custom cf7 submission now let's name the tag and click save the time has come for us to test so click preview button once again to refresh the preview mode then you will see that it loads again then our website refreshes and let's submit the form once again submit the form here's the success message now let's go to the preview mode and we see that our cf7 event is now in the data layer and once you click it you will see that your ga4 tag fired now let's go to google analytics and then on the left sidebar go to debug view here you should select your device if there are more than one and soon after you go here you will find your event right here in my case that is form submission but if you're tracking some other event obviously that other event name will be here so i can click on this event and i can see what kind of parameters were sent so for example speaking of my custom dimension here it is form id right here and this is the value that was in the data layer so now i am able to distinguish that this form submission event came precisely from this form and not some other form that is on this website but our job is not done yet if you want to see data of this particular parameter in google analytics for interface you have to register that custom parameter as custom definition that's why you should go to 
all events, then click manage custom definitions, then click create custom definition, and then you should enter the name of your custom dimension. Now, this name must be exactly as it is right here. I mean, in your tag, this one. So copy this, then paste it right here, save it, and your custom dimension is now registered in the Google Analytics 4 interface. So what does it mean is that within 24 hours, first of all, your event will appear here. And also when you click on that event, inside of that event, you will see some additional report about that particular custom dimension. But remember, it takes time for the data to appear in regular Google Analytics 4 reports. It will not appear instantly. But just to give you a glimpse of how that data will look in your reports, here's another test property where I sent an event which is called menu click. So this happens when a visitor clicks on any of the menu items on the website. And together with that menu click event, I also sent the URL of the menu item. So, I mean, which URL was clicked and also what was the name or in other words, the text of the link of that menu item. So I went to engagement, then events. I was then redirected to the list of all events. And if I click on that particular menu click event at the bottom, I will find two widgets about each dimension. Of course, this is not the only place where you will find that data. And if you want to learn more about where to find the event data in your GA4 reports, I will post a link to that very same event tracking guide below this video. Now, in the beginning of this video, I also quickly mentioned user scope. In Google Analytics 4, user scope dimensions are called user properties. So if you have a certain parameter and you want to register it as a user property, you should go to the user properties section in your Google Analytics 4 interface, click it, and then register that property by clicking new user property right here, and then enter that property name right here. So if you are, for example, sending the pricing plan of the user with every page and every event, and let's say that this is some data layer variable that returns pricing plan, then you should register this pricing plan as a user property right here, and then click create but I will not dive deeper into those in this video because user properties is probably a different topic for another video or tutorial. And one last thing to mention in this video is the limitations because Google Analytics 4 has some limits when it comes to configuring custom dimensions. So when it comes to custom text parameters, so this is custom dimension, you can create up to 50 dimensions per property. And speaking of user properties, you can create up to 25 properties per Google Analytics 4 property. I know that this might sound quite confusing because we're talking about user properties, but also about GA4 properties. So basically you can create up to 25 user parameters per Google Analytics 4 property. Also, there is another limit that you should keep in mind, and that is the length of the parameter name. You can create parameters that are no longer than 40 characters. And that is how you track custom dimensions with Google Analytics 4. The process is different compared to the universal analytics. You don't have to create custom dimensions up front. Feel free to just send custom parameters whenever you need. But if you want to use them in GA4 reports, then you will need to register those parameters as custom definitions in Google Analytics 4 interface. And don't forget the limits of how many custom dimensions can you have in a single GA4 property. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.